Welcome to the Eat Away Kidney Stones podcast. I'm your host, registered dietitian and kidney stone expert, Melanie Betts. After learning a ton about kidney stones and helping people prevent stones at the University of Chicago, I was fed up with all the terrible advice people were finding online. So I decided to do something about it. The Kidney Dietitian was born. This podcast is for people who want to learn what actually works to prevent kidney stones and still enjoy life, eating, and their favorite foods. Let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode three of the Eat Away Kidney Stones podcast. I'm your host, registered dietitian and kidney stone expert, uh, Melanie Betts, and I'm so excited for you to join me for a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I get very passionate and fired up about this topic. Uh, Why is there no single kidney stone diet? Um, This is something that is, if you learn nothing else from me, I hope that you learn that there is no single piece of advice that I can give you or that someone online can give you or honestly even your doctor can give you about how to prevent kidney stones unless they've done their due due diligence into figuring out why you are forming kidney stones. Um, So so yeah, again, kidney stone nutrition is different for every single person and it's based on a lot of different things. So, So today I want to dive into a little bit about why there is no single kidney stone diet and also also what you can do to learn about what a kidney stone quote diet or what kidney stone nutrition should look like for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, the first thing that should just sort of make intuitive sense is that kidney stones are not the same, right? You and me and your neighbor Joe and Sally down the street, right? Kidney stones are not the same. People are not the same. We all form kidney stones because of a gajillion different reasons. And so to think that there's these this sort of blanket universal recommendations for kidney stones just doesn't really make a lot of intuitive sense, right? Um, and that sort of plays out when you actually kind of start thinking about kidney stone results and like what's going on with, with kidney stone chemistry. So, um, so, you know, a lot of times people say like, okay, well, I have calcium oxalate stones, like what can I eat? Well, it is very, very rare that when you get that stone analysis back, if you are lucky enough to catch your stone or uh, maybe your doctor keeps some stone fragments after your surgery or stone removal uh, to for, for analysis, it's very rare that a kidney stone is made up of 100% of the same material, right? Like usually kidney stones are like 80% calcium oxalate and maybe 20% uh, something else, right? Or sometimes even 50-50. Like it's it's almost I've, maybe a handful of times <laughs> have I seen that kidney stones are 100% one type. Um, and so it's you know, kind of thinking that there's one stone diet or even one one stone diet for all people with calcium oxalate stones doesn't make a lot of sense because kidney stones are usually made up of a variety of different things. And so really knowing what kind of kidney stone you have isn't enough to ha- for me as a dietitian to tell you what you can do to, to prevent kidney stones. Um, and really the most important thing to really think about when we think about stone prevention, whether it's for nutrition or medical prevention with medications or um, any advice to prevent kidney stones, the thing that's so, so important to remember is that there are different urine risk factors, even for the same kind of kidney stone. So I could have a a primarily calcium oxalate kidney stone and you could have a primarily calcium oxalate kidney stone, but what's really driving that stone formation, what's going on in your urine to make that kidney stone form can be very, very different and is very, very different for each of us. And so obviously, if we are forming stones because of different reasons, the things that we are going to do to prevent those stones have to be different. Otherwise, you're going to be focusing on things that may make no difference when it comes to kidney stone prevention. Um, and and those things likely are sort of distracting you from focusing on what really will make a difference for you based on your urine chemistry, right? So let's dive into this uh, different urine risk factors for the same type of kidney stone a little bit more. So if we think about uh, calcium oxalate stones, and I'll talk a lot about those just because they are by far the most common type of stone, um, but this the same uh, principles hold true for all types of kidney stones. It's 
especially for calcium phosphate and uric acid stones. Things get a little bit more streamlined when we think about cysteine or struvite stones, but those are very rare. Um, I'll probably do a podcast about each of those types of stones in the future, but but for the three most common types, so uh, calcium phosphate, uh, calcium oxalate, and uric acid stones, there are different things that are going on in your urine that's forming that stone. So for calcium oxalate stones, some of the things that could be true um, is that you could be forming stones simply because you have low urine volume. So if you aren't drinking very much, your urine is going to be super concentrated and all of the calcium and oxalate that's floating around, because everyone has some calcium and oxalate in their urine. It's it's impossible to have zero. That wouldn't be a healthy, <laughs> you, you would not be a functioning human if that was the case. Um, so if your urine is very concentrated because you're not drinking enough, for some people, that alone is the cause of stones. So when we think about oxalate or sodium or protein and all this other stuff, it doesn't matter because all those other things are in normal parameters and you really just have to be drinking more water, right? So that could be could be what's going on. I, I That urine risks factor, um, I name low urine volume, right? So if that that's that could be one thing going on. Another thing that could be going on in your urine is you have low urine citrate. So citrate um, comes up a lot, a lot, a lot when you Google kidney stone nutrition. Um, that is why you read things about lemon juice and lemonade, and I'll, I'll definitely do a whole other podcast about that. But for the purposes of our podcast today, uh, citrate is something that you want a lot of in your urine because citrate can or citrate makes it harder for calcium-based stones to form. So if you don't have enough citrate in your urine, sometimes that alone can be enough to cause kidney stones in some people. So um, low urine citrate could be something that's contributing to those calcium oxalate stones. Um, another thing is urine pH. So pH is just a, uh, if you want to go back to high school chemistry, I promise this will be pretty painless, but <laughs> if you go back to urine chemistry, a pH stands for power of hydrogen, and it's basically just a measure of how much acid or negative acid, aka alkali, is in your urine. There are some types of stones that are more common or more likely to form when pH is very high um, or there's not enough acid in your urine. Um, calcium phosphate is the, the big one there. Um, or there are certain types of stones that are more, more likely to form if you have very low urine pH or have too much acid in your urine. Uh, uric acid is definitely the biggest one there, but, but likely calcium oxalate stones are more likely in higher amounts of acid or lower pH as well. So maybe there's something something going on with your pH that could be contributing to your stones. Um, here's the big one. So, so another thing that could be going on in your urine that's contributing to those calcium oxalate stones is high urine calcium. This is by far the most common urine risk factor that I see. Um, and it, uh, in addition to that low urine volume, but but high urine calcium is usually what me and your doctor are working on to get um, to, to prevent kidney stones for you. Um, so yeah, high urine calcium could be going on. Um, you also also could have high urine oxalate, um, or maybe you have high urine uric acid, um, which of course makes uric acid stones a bit more likely. Um, but also potentially high high uric acid could make calcium oxalate stones more likely. So that that's a lot of information. But the take home message is, is that you, you likely don't have all of these urine risk factors. I've almost never seen someone who has all of these things. Chances are you have a few of these. Chances are there's one or two that are really driving your stone formation. Chances are there's a couple of these that is really kind of sticking out is like, this is really what we need to target to prevent stones for you. Um, and based on what of which of those things is going on in your urine, that is how I would uh, sort of come up with a personalized prevention, kidney stone prevention plan for you or your doctor or your dietitian should be putting together a prevention plan for you. Um, so that, going back to the, the thesis, if you will, of this episode, um, the idea that there's this one stone diet that works for everyone just doesn't make sense when you start to think about the chemistry and what's, what's causing stones and how they are so different, both from this sort of what's causing them as well as just 
just the stone themselves. It just doesn't make sense. And all of this is actually completely in line with what the official guidelines from the American Neurological Association say. If you if you want to, I, I'll put a link in the show notes to the official guidelines if you want to get super sciencey. They're they're long. Just warning you. But if you if you want to, um, and if you want to dig into them, you can see that other than fluid, there is no nutrition-related recommendation that applies to everyone with kidney stones. All of the nutrition recommendations are sort of... uh, not given with a disclaimer, but have like a, the statement includes something around a type of kidney stone and some sort of urine parameter. So for example, um, they only say to lower dietary oxalate intake if you have high urine oxalate and a history of calcium oxalate stones. So the thought that everyone should limit oxalate is, uh, is bananas quite frankly i'll i'll definitely have another episode (laughs) about oxalate again if you've hung around with me for a while you you know that i don't love a a super duper low oxalate diet because i think it can actually make a lot of things worse when it comes to kidney stone prevention but that is for another day um so so yeah so this uh this notion of one kidney stone diet or when you are um you know, online and you're reading things from other people and people are saying, oh, well, this worked for me. Well, you, you know, are you like that person? Do you know what's forming their kidney stones? Is that the same as yours? And if it's not, it's completely irrelevant advice and, and honestly could be harmful advice. So, um, yes, that's, I just wanted to, to, to mention that the, the guidelines, uh, are in line with this this notion that that nutrition really should be personalized to you and your 24-hour urine test results. And the other thing that's really important to think about when you are making any sort of dietary change is what else is going on in your medical history. Um, you know, chances are may, maybe you do just have kidney stones, but perhaps you also have high blood pressure. Perhaps you um, have a history of bariatric surgery. Uh, bariatric surgery significantly increases your risk of stones. So my guess is there's some of you out there listening that have had bariatric surgery. Um, perhaps you also have a history of heart disease or stroke or Crohn's disease or all sorts like there's tons of other things that could be going on and that is why it's so important to work with a dietitian to make sure that your your diet plan or your the changes that you're making to your diet are are sort of addressing all of the things going on with you um, because you know, there, there's certain aspects, specifically the protein aspect and oxalate, but we'll, we'll talk about protein a little bit right now. Um, you know, doing a, a low protein or, or lowering how much protein you're eating could be harmful for some people. If you have a history of bariatric surgery, you probably need more protein than other people. Um, if you're an older adult, you may need more protein than other people. If you live in a small body, you may need a more protein per kilogram body weight amount than other people, right? So um, the point is, you really need to be making sure that you're looking at all of the things going on, both in your medical history and in your life, as well as in your kidney stone uh, situation, (laughs) if you will, uh, to really, really understand what is going to matter for you and what's going to be a safe dietary change for you. Um, So hopefully that helps make a little bit of sense over how over my my approach to kidney stone nutrition and how really all of us should be approaching kidney stone nutrition um the oh the last thing i wanted to mention uh is how do you know this right um if you've been around for a while, you probably know that my answer to this is that 24-hour urine test. Um, a 24-hour urine test or a series of 24-hour urine tests is really what's going to tell you what is going on in your urine that's causing stones. Therefore, me as your dietitian and your doctor can come up with a, an effective treatment plan. Without that 24-hour urine test, we truly are just guessing as to what's causing your stones and what what we can do to prevent them. And so that 24-hour urine test is so, so important. Um, to to even begin down any road towards stone prevention. Without it, again, we, we really are just guessing. So that is it for today. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I will drop a link to the official guidelines, the American Neurological Association guidelines for the management of kidney stones. And if you are interested in this 24-hour urine test and you haven't had one, know that you are not alone. <laughs> Unfortunately, only around 20% of people with kidney stones ever get this urine test, despite it being recommended in these official guidelines from, from the Urological Professional Association. So um, I actually have a wonderful tip sheet 
to um, help you ask your urologist. Usually it's your urologist who orders this test Um, because I know sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to be like, hey, doctor, like order this test that I heard about on this podcast. Like I understand that that's kind of awkward. So um, I have a a document that is free um, for you. It's a reference to learn a little bit more about this test and some talking points and tips for you to ask your doctor for that test to really start working on a targeted kidney stone prevention plan. So with that, I will close this episode and I hope to, to see you again soon. Thank you for listening to today's episode. For more help with kidney stones, check out my website, www.thekidneydietitian.org. For more personalized help from me, check out my online course, Kidney Stone Nutrition School. VIP enrollment includes help directly from me. I can't wait to see you there and help you prevent kidney stones. Have a great day. Thank you.